Sure. Bye-bye. We're just repositioning everybody. Whatever. There we go. The world is not in a stable place. I think we're more in still. Yeah. There we are. I think we're good. I have a feeling I'm sitting on a carpet. It's going to slide not long from now. Do you know how challenging it is for us to like get both into the video because you're so tall? I am. When I'm, we're sitting down, I think I have a long torso. <laughs> No, I mean that seriously. I know, it's just funny we always say that. By the way, I'm not that tall. Hysteria <laughs> always says, oh, but well, you're that tall. I'm six foot three. That's tall. It's not like six foot eight. Like, they're, like you know, there's that tall. That tall for me is over six foot five. Well, I'm not that short. There's four foot eight. No, but she is that short. <laughs> She's five foot one. And three quarters. You know what, <laughs> though? We had a visitor this week. Hi, Marcy Williams. Hi, Jessica LeBlanc. Oh, I know it's not LeBlanc. That's how Brian pronounces it. LeBlanc, <laughs> the white. Hey, hey, Alicia. Alicia. Alicia's a... Uh, Lindsay Place. Lindsay Place, I yeah. I know who Alicia is. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Um, I don't remember what we're talking Trisha. Oh, hi, Trisha. Trisha Gardner. Love me a short girl. So does Brian. I do love me a short girl. Two is it? Three, actually, because Trisha Gardner, Carrie Campbell, and my daughter, Maya, are all teeny. I love them all. I have to ask, Marcy, are you gonna are we gonna be seeing you next weekend? Is that confirmed? Yes, New York City. Christina Rasmus. Christina Rasmus, oh my god, we love you. Christina, I had a dream about you last night. He did, you just I told did. Me that. I told you like half an hour ago I told Kara I had a dream about you. It was not uh, anything I remember, but you were in my dream. Yeah, and I'm gonna just And I'm gonna rely on your intuitive awesomeness to tell me why, because there must be a why behind <laughs> that. Before we go on, everyone watching, this is gonna be a short live stream. We're going to talk about success from the other side. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We'll tell you in a second. Um, weight loss, entrepreneurial success. Doesn't matter what kind of success we're talking about, there is another side, the other side. We're going to talk about that today. I'm excited. And I have to finish now and say, Marcy, I hope we see you next weekend. Yeah. And Christina, I'm going to say this just because I'm really bad at surprises, but I just mailed you something special today. I know what it is. I, I love exactly. mailing things to people. Dave Garceau, what's up, man? Garceau, you're French. I don't know if you know that because I know you live in the States, but I have so many friends. I live in French Canada. I'm not French. But I have so many friends in the States who have French last names and don't even realize they're French. Garceau is very French. Very French, So yes. is Bernard, for that matter. Right. right? Danny, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah. I love it. From across the pond, what's going oh, on? Oh, it's awesome. You know, Adam, Adam is a great topic. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh my God, my world just got shaken up kind of talk. And I'm not joking. Like, I'm not trying to be anticipatory for no reason. This is going to shake it up. <laughs> Could you please shake like for us? <laughs> I just love your hair. Thank you, Alicia. Alicia comments on my hair every single time in the way it's grown, whether it's on a poster um, or this. Thank you. I Alicia, can I get a shout out? about my beard or something. Yes, let's pay attention to the I beard. love Scott Livingston. Scott, come in here for silly next Wednesday. We're gonna tool it up, man. <laughs> really looking forward to that. I'm excited. By it's the way, been like three years and we've been trying to get there. Right, and publicly right now, uh, Carrie and I had the honor of speaking at Concordia University here in Montreal last Saturday. Yeah, uh, And uh, Scott Livingston uh, really was the engineer behind all of that. We got a chance to talk for about, I don't know, nine hours. Or so. Which, if you know us, that's not long it's enough. Not very long. Uh, to some of the most well-known and successful performance coaches and therapists in all of Canada, it was a, quite an honor. So, thank you. I love that. Um, I just want yeah, to say shaking it up, Adam. We're doing it. A few random things right now. Number one, it never ceases to amaze me how much I love interacting on live stream. Like, I, I love it when you guys try to. So do I. I. We're like, gonna get to the good stuff in a second. But, but the second thing I want to say. I just recalled that we both just drank a shake with spinach in it, mm. and I didn't drink <laughs> spinach. No, you're fine. No. <laughs> the teeth are good. Your Brian, your beard good. has grown really nice. Yeah, that was kind of like not cool, but all right. Your beard is very... <laughs> Carrie, I love your hair. Oh my God, it's beautiful. LOL, Brian, your beard For is For the record, nice we got on a business call the other day yeah. with the wonderful Roche Khan. He said nothing about my hair. He commented, his exact it's words true. were, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm blinded by the beauty of your beard, Brian. The beard was distracting, that's what he said, yeah. Anyways, we should talk uh, about it. You rock every, we do rock at every event we speak at, Trish, I agree. It's Thank you. Fun. That's what we really like met. talk. We met Trish and By the way, this is what we're going to talk about today. See that? It says... The lazy investor. I'm giving you a hint now. But we're not going to talk about investing money. Well, we are, but we're not. 
It's not the point. Of what it's not the point. About. It's not like we are investment specialists right. who are going to give it, uh, inv investment advice. No, we're using it as a conduit to the other message. side of success. Uh, Paul Webb, I see you. I love Paul Webb. Paul Webb's the best. Oh, Paul, such a handsome. How you going, Mike? He's not Australian. <laughs> He's just not Australian. It's a joke we have. Okay. <laughs> Well, I should start. I think you should. Everybody ready? If you're ready, if you're ready, if you're excited to hear about success from the other side, give us a comment. Say yes. Just like Say that. Hell yes. All caps, yes, or hell yes. We'll keep saying hi to people like Tamara or Christy, who just chimed in. We'll keep saying hi to people until I start seeing some yeses come down the screen. Tamara just sent me a message, and the opening of the message was something about, like, it was exciting. I didn't read the whole message yet, but I'm so excited to go back and read it. I miss you guys. Huh? Thanks. Ah, oh, we rocked it on Saturday at Concordia, so says Scott. Yay. Yeah, thanks, brother. You know... Tamara's yeah. ready. I got my first yes. I want more yeses. I was a, a derivatives trader for 11 years. All oh, right. Nice, man. I Trisha says, it. of course. Hell to the yes. Hell to the yes. <laughs> Marcy Marcy's so the much. best. She, she <laughs> brings the flavor. You have to come next week because we have hugs for you. Right? We do. It's a long time to give some hugs. And... Uh, at least your parents says yes. I think you Bulgarian Rose as well. Yes, Dave Garceau. Paul Webb says fuck yes. Paul, right. there's no swearing on our live there's streams. There's lots of swearing on our live streams. <laughs> All right, let me get to this, okay? So this book, The uh, Lazy Investor, let me explain, okay? That was one of the very first books that you and I read related to investing on money. Mm -hmm. It was actually not that long ago. Right. So I'm, I'm not, we're not embarrassed to say that it was something we kind of, we didn't look at as seriously or as passionately as perhaps we should have, but we certainly do now, Right. okay? So, what's the point? This is not about investments or investing money. What do you just want to add? Tamara Christie, she wrote no swearing, ha ha. Yeah, no Sorry. swearing, she knows us, that's why. <laughs> so let's talk about this now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna base this off of, uh, I can base it off of entrepreneurs, but I, can all, I base it off of everybody, because I mean, for the most part, we all have jobs, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, you have a job, you can pay the salary, right? So. You're welcome, Bulgarian Rose. Um, so that being said, here's what it looks like. When we think about making money, we look at it from one side. Almost everybody looks at it from one side and one side only. That is, how do I make more money? Mm -hmm. okay, that's like the crux of being an entrepreneur. It's always about hiring coaches, buying products, or investigating yourself on how to make more cash. And is that a bad thing? Well, of course it's not a bad thing. It's a perfectly reasonable thing. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a necessary thing. It's part of the success paradigm, right. right? But the other side of success that very few, and I'm, I'm talking less than 2% of people ever look at, is how to grow wealth or become wealthy by managing, investing your money, mm -hmm. okay? And as a, as a really a lifelong entrepreneur, both of us, mm -hmm. you know, we know the entrepreneur game well. We dump all of our energy, all of our time, all of our assets and resources into learning how to make more money. And practically no assets, resources, or energy on learning how to invest, manage our money so that it grows in wealth, right? And that's the double spoke. Okay, the double spoke is how do I make more money? i.e. revenues coming in, but then how do I take the money I've made, invest it well, so that it grows my wealth, my profile, my portfolio, my net worth, okay? It's something no one wants to look at. It's, like, it's almost like it confuses people or scares people or people think <coughs> that it's, it's, it's confusing or complex. And I think perhaps one of the worst case scenarios is that we just trust our money to financial advisors. And I, I mean, I could go on, on and on and on about why I don't like that. But that's not the point of this. It's not about learning to invest money. This whole thing is about the other side of success, right? So let's talk about it now in terms of weight loss, entrepreneurs, any sort of success paradigm that you're looking to achieve in your life. If you're an entrepreneur, my guess is that you spend 90 to 95% of your time, resources, and energy on learning how to make more money. Mm -hmm. Bang, that's it. If you are looking to lose weight, <clears throat> You spend 90 to 95 percent of your time, energy, and resources on learning how to lose weight and then applying those strategies. It's all about learning and then applying, right? But conservatively speaking, if I were to invest a little bit of money every single month, a little bit, 
starting at the age of 20. And I just consistently invested 100 bucks a month into something that would accrue 10% annually for the next 30, 40 years, I would be a millionaire by the time I was 50 because that's the way compound interest works, okay? Same is true about the other side of success, no matter what kind of success we're looking at. You are standing or sitting in a boat right now. We all are, all of us are, okay? And what we're doing is we're learning how to paddle that boat. We're learning how to paddle it better, faster, more efficiently. We're putting all of our time, energy, and resources, 90-95% of our time, energy, and resources on the paddle. Okay? But your boat, my boat, Carrie's boat, everybody's boat at one time or another is tied to the dock. And we don't notice it. So we are spending an inordinate amount of time paddling the boat. We are believing the experts, buying the success, uh, success secrets, how to make more money, how to do Facebook ads, how to blah, 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 90 to 95% of it all. But if you would just turn around and untie the rope, the one or two strategies you, you have and work with are going to prove successful. You're going to be able to sail off into that horizon where you want to be. Right. That's the other side of success. You have limits that are mental and emotional. Okay? I do not know an entrepreneur who could ever grow successfully in their business if they have a mental barrier to becoming successful. Right. I do not know anybody who, could, who wants to lose weight who is ever going to succeed at that if there's an emotional barrier that prevents them from sustaining the habits necessary to lose the weight. Mental and emotional barriers create, cause, self-sabotage. Right, we self-sabotage all the time. Whether we're entrepreneurs, we're trying to lose weight, we're trying to find or maintain love, we self-sabotage endlessly. Endlessly. Mm -hmm. And it's a vicious cycle that never stops. It's because we're not looking at the other side of success. Right. We're looking at the 90 to 95% of going forward, learning how to make more money, learning what right macros to eat, um, you know, learning how to find and keep a man in 10 easy steps. We're always going that direction, but we're not looking at the limits that are holding us back from any of that stuff working efficiently. Yeah. So this isn't about investing money. Yeah. This is about... The metaphor is growing wealth is, yeah, learn to make more money, but learn to invest it well. That's how wealth accrues the other side of success. <clears throat> there you are. <laughs> go now I'm going to go. Um, so, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing because we always, whenever we have something to share with you guys, I never really know what's gonna, what part of it I'm going to want to share after you're yeah. done talking. Are you going to forget what you want to share? No. Shout out to Jane Jackson. <laughs> I sent you a message about two hours ago. Billy Reuter, mad love. See you in New York City next week. Michael Wexel, going to come for a little chiropractic. Yeah, I think I've got a, I got a rib out. I love him. His uh, chiropractic office is about 10 minutes from where we're sitting right now. Michelle Adams. Hello, lovely. Anyways, I'm done. Yeah, no, I just, I, I simply wanted to, um, to say something that sometimes comes our way. So, you know, you gave the two spokes of the financial success, sure. right? Now, like the two spokes in so far as personal success in whatever realm you're talking about, you know, it, you know, untie yourself from the dock, know the limiting beliefs, know the stories, mm. know what is holding you back. And, and the others, we're not discounting the other side. No. We're not telling you that you can, you know, don't ever go on a date again right. and expect to find love or don't do the marketing strategies and expect yeah. to be able, we're not saying don't do that. Never but, and I, and I think sometimes people make that misinterpretation mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, working in the mindset and mental, emotional realm, the spirituality sometimes takes over and people think that what we're saying is just kind of sit down and manifest it. But that's not what we're saying. No, we're, saying. we're saying untie yourself from the dock Activate. first and then put your paddles in the water sure. and start paddling. Mm -hmm. And that's how it really all starts to happen. Every time. Yeah. And without that, it, no, it doesn't happen. Yeah. You, you, and you know the vicious circle. You get excited, you create a goal, you go after it, you motivate yourself. Inside of a couple hours, couple days, couple weeks, you're flat. Yeah. 
and you can't seem to get out of your own way, then you start doubting yourself because you've been there before, and here's another example of how I'm never gonna be successful, and then you kind of flatline for a good couple weeks, couple months, until you have to start generating motivation again right. to pursue it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole problem. It's this endless cycle that does not stop, okay? And let me just shout out to uh, Jess Taylor. Hola. Hope your ankle's okay. Señorita. See, see you in a week. Very excited for that hug. <laughs> Maureen, hello. I love Carol Wood. If you can hear me, because you just chimed in right now. And Lisa, let us know what you think about the books. I love everybody who's here. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and so many people here I've talked with today at some point. Carol and I just messaged. So Absolutely. it makes me happy. So listen, are you picking up what we're laying down? Are you hearing our message? Do you understand where we're coming from? If so, give me a yes, a hell yes, a fuck yes, sorry Tamara, no swearing. But just give me some comments right now. Do you understand where we're coming from? It's the vicious, endless cycle that doesn't ever stop for people. Ever, ever, ever. And that's because mental emotional barriers are always in the way until we eliminate those limits. Absolutely. We've missed you too, Michelle. And the simplicity of it is like if you're starting and stopping multiple different things over uh, diet, exercise, mm. mark, if you're jumping from one to the other, the chances are your boat's a little tied. A little bit. You probably need to unravel it. Billy gives a big hell yes. Billy's, Billy's I my love favorite. Billy. Billy's my favorite. He could kill you with a potato. <laughs> your favorite line Because ever. he's like such a badass, but he's a... <laughs> biggest softy on the planet. Uh, heads up to everybody who's watching right now. Tomorrow, mm. I am going to live stream Brian's special ops training yeah. for a little bit. So stay tuned. Tomorrow, pop hope, in on that as well. Hopefully my coach doesn't feel in the mood to kick my ass too hard. I hope he shoves grass in your mouth. He does that sometimes. <laughs> so I got, we've got two. We've got two great hell yeses. One from Michelle Adams, one from Billy. Who else? Who's picking up what we're laying down? Your boat's tied to the dock. You can spend all your time, all your money, all your energy on hiring coaches, buying books, learning about sales copies and strategies and everything else, but it's going to take you nowhere unless you untie those mental emotional barriers. You know, yeah, right? I love it. Tamara and Christy swore. That's so wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I want to add something. I wrote about this on Facebook a couple days ago, and Ryan Lee who's a great friend of mine. I've known him for almost 15 years. But he's like, I mean, he's Ryan Lee. If you don't know him, he's probably one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the entire world, for, has been for the last decade. Mm -hmm. He chimed in on my, on my uh, status about this exact point, right. and he wrote simply, this is true. Right? That's coming from one of the most successful entrepreneurs who's ever lived, yeah. literally. So give me more. Give me more hell yeses. Hello, Hi, we, lo Philip. we love the people. So are you, Philip. So are you, Sorry. man. We love them. I don't know. I got the giggles there. Denny Denholm. Denny Denholm, a type of badasses. Right. With a big, huge heart. There he is right, right there. I love that. So yeah, we're making this a short live stream today. We are making a short live stream today, unless you guys start talking to us, because we're, then we can keep going. Well, but. We are going to go to the gym. <laughs> we are going to go to the gym. Just an air mattress. I love air mattresses. Oh, Scott, I love that. <laughs> you know what? I love you too so much, Scott and your and his wife Jamie. That's yes. great. Tatiana. Tatiana. Tatiana and Philip just got married this summer. Oh. Congratulations. Salut. Huh? How do you say congratulations? Uh, Felicitations. Felicitations. There's a lot of pronunciation in there. Felicitations. <laughs> I'm not French. I live in French Canada. I'm not French. That's yeah, we have to get some sushi sometime soon. You know, I, I just want to address what Michelle Adams just said because it's so valuable. She says you got to peel the onion. Yes. And it's so true. And like peeling the layers off, it really, really does matter. We, what I, you know, we have a private client who I was just talking about that exact thing today mm. because she was feeling somewhat discouraged about the fact that she was like, you know, still on the journey. Yep. And I was, and I said to her, I said, Do you, we have, we have people who we worked with on and off for the last eight years or so based on where they're at in the moment, because it, it, it is appeal to on the layers away. What's relevant to you today. It might be completely different in six months right. from now based on your growth, but there, there isn't a right. stopping point. Right? We evolve, right? We evolve all the time. So there's always, we're always on the journey. Uh, Philip asked a great question. Do you think that people trust themselves to get fit and healthy? I don't. I mean, this is certainly just our opinion, but no, we, we don't think people trust themselves. And there's a myriad of reasons for that. I think that in many respects, the 
society at large has painted a very confusing picture of what's required to be fit and healthy. Yeah. Um, I think on another level, much more to the point of what we're talking about today, um, people have mental emotional barriers to fit and healthy. Yeah. And unless or until they peel them back, they're never going to quite release from that problem, that issue. Now, Philip, to, to round out our answer, you know, we work with all kinds of private clients all over the world, from entrepreneurs to married couples and relationships to uh, you're just your average person who's looking to understand how to limit limits they have in life, to corporate CEOs, to athletes, you name it, we work with them. Um, but the interesting part of all that is irrespective of who we're working with from a demographic perspective, our system's the same. It's three parts. We help people understand how to know themselves. That's it, that's all. I mean, <clears throat> I was victim of that myself. I, <clears throat> I didn't know what I wanted to do in the gym. And because of that, I didn't do anything in particularly well. In particularly well. Is that right? Particularly well. In particular. What Carrie said. So know yourself is step number one, and that's where our process starts. Right. Number two is eliminate your self-limiting beliefs. Where in your unconscious is your limiting belief story that we can easily augment very simply once we know what it is? And then third, the final phase is Simplicity plus consistency. Mm -hmm. Create systems and structures that allow you to do simple things every single day. That's it. Because simple and consistent beget success always. Yeah. And that's the problem. Unless you know yourself, and unless you eliminate your self limiting beliefs, you will always self-sabotage, right. which makes simplicity and consistency impossible. Absolutely. And it really is simple once you get to that third phase. You know, the number of times we've had clients actually tell us that it's almost like uncanny how easy it is now. It's very you know, easy. It really, because the fight is in the limiting beliefs and yes. the self-sabotaging language and all that stuff. That's where the fight is. The exactly. fight isn't in the execution. It's Not just coming out that way. Scott, by the way, yes, I'm all for uh, taking the, the boat out next summer because uh, skiing is so wrong. Who skis? Honestly, who skis? Hi, Meninder. We miss you. Oh, hi, Meninder. I love Meninder. I've been mess meaning to message Meninder for like three weeks now saying, oh my gosh, you have to come to Spain. <laughs> just I'm say, <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> Interesting is I teach and train the same as an MD. Right on. I, love that. I, like, being, I like being held in the same qualification as smart people like MDs. So that makes me happy. <laughs> Hello, Meninder. I love it. We're right not. Well, we should wrap up. Yeah, we were going to be short and sweet today. We're going to head to the gym. Uh, you're going to read Maureen's comment for me. <laughs> okay, I can't see it right now. Um, she's referring to accountability, saying that she does better when she when she has to answer to her coach. Yeah, hey, yeah. listen, coaches are necessary. That's why. Uh, Tatiana says, if you have time, could you speak a little bit about why people seem to go either all in or all out? Why don't we accept imperfections? You are clear. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Oh my God, I love Amber. I just saw her name. Uh, Tatiana, great question. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons for that, right? And some of these may become a little spiritual. Now, let me dissect what I mean by spiritual, okay? For us, spirituality has nothing to do with religion. Uh, or a particular God, spirituality for us is the intimate knowledge of oneself. That's what we consider to be spiritual, understanding and knowing yourself, what drives you, what motivates you, what inspires you, what compels you to act and behave certain ways. Um, the know yourself, eliminate yourself living beliefs, that's for us where it all starts. The number of people, and I mean, this, this is into the millions of people around the world who walk through life not knowing themselves, they self-sabotage, they have unreasonable expectations, a lot of it is societal driven, but at the same time, I don't blame media, I don't blame society, I don't do that because we all live in the same world. Mm -hmm. So if I can turn off societal influences, anybody can. If Carrie can turn them off, anybody can. So it's not about blaming society or media, but it is understanding that if we don't know ourselves and what truly is driving us, then we're forever in this comparative mode, right? We're comparing the people we see on Facebook. We're comparing ourselves against the people we see on TV. We're comparing ourselves against the people we see uh, in magazines or on billboards. It's a constant comparative mindset that is very subtle and very unconscious. We don't even recognize we're doing it, but that's because we have a limited knowledge of self. We don't really at all understand ourselves because 
especially here in the Western culture, exploration of self is not considered much of anything other than crazy, nuanced, spiritual, right. godly gook. But it's not. It's an essential part of standing in yourself with confidence. Your question pertained to imperfections. For us, there are no imperfections. There just is. Mm -hmm. I am what I am. That, that de-stresses the entire labeling atmosphere of perfect versus imperfect. But you can only get to that definition once you know yourself well. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously I agree. And I just want to address, because Maureen chimed in there with the whole perfection is, is something that's so important to her. Mm. I think that so many people cling to the notion of perfection yes. without realizing absolutely how destructive it is. Yes. I, I think, you know, we said this, I think a couple of weeks ago on a live stream that like, I don't ever want to be perfect right. because perfect would imply that I'm quote unquote there. I'm yeah. at the destination and I have no greater capacity to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and for me at that point, it's like, what, what is the point? Because I think we should sure. always be growing and evolving. So sure. I, I think if you're going <laughs> to opt to be all into something, mm -hmm. Maureen, because I'm addressing you particularly, and Tatiana, and Tatiana yeah. I would opt to be all into the journey yeah. and the commitment to that. Right. And, and that's where you get to invest your time. Absent lip service, because what Carrie just said was very, very powerful. But we all, and we talk about this all the time when we speak live, everybody can quote the quotables. Yeah. Everybody knows the, the, the Muhammad Ali quotes or the you know, Mother Teresa quotes or whatever it might be. Uh, it's, it's about the journey, not the destination. We all know that one. Right. We've known that one since we were four years old, but we don't apply it. Right. We don't use it in our, in our, contextually, we don't use it in our lives. We don't implement it. We don't at all adhere to it. And again, I want to bring this back. That's because we don't know ourselves. Right. It's very simple to get caught up in motivation. It's very simple to get caught up in quotes. It's, it's very simple to change all of that to learn to know yourself. But I think people think it's complex and it's not. By the way, Sylvie Jackson's watching. I love you, I'd like you to chime in, Sylvie, because I want to know if we're live inside of Lindsay Place's classroom right now. It might be lunchtime. I'm just curious. I just realized. Because I want to shout out to everybody. Which, because, if it's know? lunchtime, I'm curious to know if Sylvie's watching this in like the staff room, because that's even more funny to me. Joe Staffelbooker is here. Right on. By the way, Tatiana, <laughs> I love that you participated. Thank you. We miss you a lot and your amazing husband. So. Many congratulations Absolutely. to you guys. And we want to get together with you guys soon. Just we do. Just putting and, that out there. And if uh, mustache coach Phil uh, still has a mustache. A he's got a beard? Oh, what a beard. handsome guy, eh? <laughs> Please pass our love along to him and, and let us know if you guys want to go get some sushi someday soon. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah, right on. Beautiful. This was great. Joe Staffelhooker, just give me a little shout out as we exit. Guys, I wanted him to correct me on the way I pronounced his name, but he did it. No, it's Staff of Hooker. That's how you pronounce it. What? <laughs> Probably not really. Uh, guys, short and sweet today, but we really hope you were picking up what we were laying down. This wasn't about investing your money. This was about the other side of success. It's not about becoming successful via, via finding ways to be successful. It's about learning to eliminate the reasons you're not. That's the key. Completely. It's not about building wealth by making more money exclusively. It's about learning to take the money you have and invest it well to accrue wealth. The other side of success is one that very few people pay attention to. First step to knowing yourself, by the way, Pam, let me just answer that really fast. Yeah, yeah, sure. We call it a dictate journal. Listen to your thoughts every single day. Write them down. You'll be very surprised mm -hmm. if you just listen and write down and start to track the things you say to yourself on a regular basis. You, everyone in the world, we talk to ourselves in a way that we would never allow anybody else to speak to us. Yeah. That's where it starts. We're live, and uh, Linda, uh, Sylvie just subscribed to live feed, which I didn't even know you could do, by the way. Wow. But so that she can watch it live in class whenever we're on. Are we in live in class now? I believe so. Sylvie, when can we come to Lindsay Place? Can we come and just talk to you? Say like now. Students? We're going to the gym right now. <laughs> Post office actually first. We're going to the gym. <laughs> Sylvie, let us know if you want to come. I love it. Great, Great stream, stuff. guys. Uh, keep the comments coming. Live stream ends. Your comments keep going. We get to answer them in an hour or two. So please, more questions, more comments. We want to hear it all. Awesome. Great stuff. Yeah. Sarah Elizabeth, uh, is, is she the No, no, no. Um, that Sarah Elizabeth is the one from the gym who we used to see all the time. She had a parrot. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, I knew you were going to remember when I said that. By the way. who doesn't have a parrot? Lexi Cooper just said hi. Lexi Cooper. What a man. <laughs> Mad love for you. Oh, love it. Good stuff. 
Yeah, she'd be live with us 24 7. We're like, uh, what's that movie? The Truman Show. Oh, right. That's what we're going to do. Imagine if we just walked around with our live stream on all day long. <laughs> oh, you'd have to put up with our kids and they're batshit crazy. <laughs> I, love, I love our kids. You know what? It's always at noon. Yeah. Our kids come home at 4 o'clock. Right around this time every day. I can't wait. Yeah. I just can't wait for them to come home. I, I said love that. You, brother. Love, Billy. Can't wait to see you next week. Thank you, Jane. Um, Lexi wants us to do a, a Truman Show right on. I'm all for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Amber says hello. Apparently, we're not good at the short and sweet because we're both like, like just lingering <laughs> and fun. not pushing finish because we're enjoying this too much. We like you people. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to go to the gym because yes. I have a couple miles to run today, apparently. Keep the comments coming. We'll get back to them in a couple hours. Mad love, guys. Bye, guys. Cheers.